Hi, I'm Ted Venema. Let's complete our three-part discussion on hearing aids with this last vignette, hearing aids, directional microphones, and digital noise reduction. You'll recall last time we talked about hearing aids and their digital programs, how hearing aids, you can change the channels to adjust the gain or amplification across the frequencies differently, and how we also can store different programs on the hearing aids for listening in quiet or listening to speech and noise. Shoot, you can even make a hearing aid programmed for listening to music. So there's lots for the telephone, but I digress. Let's focus now on this last section here because hearing aids, as we said in the last one, have two tasks. One, they've got to amplify for the hearing loss, but secondly, they've got to separate speech from noise. We call that in our vernacular increasing the signal to noise ratio. The signal is what you want to hear, the noise is the, com is the competition. And it's the job of a hearing aid, to the best of our ability today, to try to separate those two. We have two ways of doing that. One's by directional microphones, and the other one is by means of digital noise reduction. Let's, let's discuss each of these. Directional microphones are often displayed, what they do, what, what they, their function is displayed in terms of polar plots. No, it has nothing to do with the North or South Pole. Consider this someone's head. The zero would be the person's nose, the 180 is the back of, uh, of her head, and the 270 and the 90 are the ears. Generally, this person's facing this way, and microphones that are equally sensitive to sounds in all direction, those are called omnidirectional microphones. And most microphones, by default, are omnidirectional. They pick up sound equally in all directions. They're equally sensitive to sounds in all directions. The next three here are directional microphones. You can see how their polar plots are different. This red one here is called a cardioid polar plot because its polar plot is shaped like a, like a heart. It's just as sensitive as the Omnimic to sounds coming from the front, but it's less sensitive to sounds coming from the rear. So it's not picking up sounds from behind the person very much. And then you can have a supercardioid, which is a little bit less sensitive to sounds coming from the sides, but oops, there's a little bulb of sensitivity toward the rear. Or the hypercardioid polar plot, which is even less sensitive to sounds from the side, but a little bit more from the rear. The point is to know that they're all equally sensitive to sounds from the front. They're just, directional mics are just less sensitive to sounds coming from the sides and from the rear. And that's all operating under the assumption that the person of interest that you're trying to hear is in front of you. And before we go any further, let's describe microphones in terms of what they really are. Microphones are transducers. They change energy from one form to another form. A microphone changes sound into electricity. And you know what a backward mic is? A speaker. A speaker changes electricity into sound. It's a transducer, it's just backwards. A frown is an upside down smile. At any rate, that's directional microphones have been shown to objectively increase speech recognition in noise time and time again. Even if they increase the decibels of speech by only a few dB, those few decibels really translate into improved speech recognition in background noise. The second way we have is, as Monty Python would say, completely different. We're talking digital noise reduction. This is a totally different animal. On this slide, you'll see two different sounds. The top sound is a tone, just going beep. Notice how it's steady in its amplitude across time. Time is this way, amplitude is this way. And a tone that's played at a steady intensity is just beep. And so can noise be. A fan, an air conditioner, bzzz. Even background speech babble. 
That's why we use the alliteration babble and hubbub. How come? Because it's blah, 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 blah. So background party babble or speech noise is relatively steady in intensity over time. But speech, the sound of my flapping gums right now, that's totally different. Look at how wubble, 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 wubble. it's changing rapidly over, over time. That's the uniqueness of the acoustics of speech. And in digital hearing aids, we build in an artificial intelligence that allows the hearing aid to, to use statistics to say, hey, is the sound coming in my microphone, does it look more like this or is it more like this? If it's like this, amplify like crazy. If it's like this, reduce the amplification. So you're, you're trying to see how much the amplitude of the sound is modulating or changing over time. That's the technique used by digital noise reduction today. Now, digital noise reduction, as we said, is a totally different kettle of fish from directional microphones. We said directional microphones have been objectively and statistically sh proven to increase speech recognition in noise. Well, digital noise reduction really hasn't, but it's still cool. It's still important. You know why? Because this addresses the heart. If you think of directional microphones as, 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 as addressing the brain, science, this addresses the art. One's the science, one's the art. One's the head, one's the heart. Together, they make a really good team. Thanks for listening.